Northumberland to take charge of this. Cannon fire and jets overhead. Plenty of muscle from Scotland before kickoff, but it has to be a huge opening part of the game for Scotland today if they're to compete. It has to be. Underdogs really need to keep themselves in the game as much as possible. And even despite what Frank Haddon was saying in the programme about being bold and adventurous, I expect Scotland to play a very territorial game today because they've got the strength in the line out and they can really use Dan Parks, kick into the touches. They'll be very, very confident they can defend at the Irish line well and really just put Ireland under pressure, force them to play the game on their own from their own half. A switch of kick to get weekend number four of the RBS Six Nations underway. Scotland will try everything today to try and confuse and confound Ireland, but they are up against a mighty green machine. And Southwell Fields and a good opening kick for touch from Ireland. Yes, well, this will be the first. This is the, the key phase. I don't expect either pack to go at each other in the scrums. They're probably not going to go, get Ireland. too much change out of each other. This really is the key phase. And if Scotland are going to stay, keep themselves and establish a foothold in this game, it has to start from the line out. Scotland's line-out has been good so far in the Six Nations, but Ireland, O'Connell and Donko Callahan will compete fiercely, but Murray rises in the middle. Three moves! Three, get out of there! Scotland just pausing and considering, and Hines is there to pick up, and the ball is out, so Stringer is upon Cusseter, but Hines picks up. Ireland get a good old shunt going forward. No hands! Scotland just a little bit ponderous to start. Hands up, Green! No! This is not the fearsome and fast start that Scotland were looking for, but they do have a penalty coming, Ireland offside. Well, I think Scotland were fortunate to get that penalty because there really was no need to go through the phases there. I really would have expected that ball to go to Dan Parks and push it down in behind Dennis Hickey. Much more simpler, however, they've got the penalty and they'll get the line, and that should bring them deep within the Irish half, which is, which is where they want to play this game. Well, Nath is going through Dan Park's mind because he was furious at being dropped after the game against England. He said he, he did what was asked of him, played the game that was demanded of him by coach Frank Haddon and did it pretty well even in defeat. But Phil Godman has been back in. And the critics say when Dan Parks comes in, you know it's going to be a kicking game. Well, he's found a decent touch and Dougie Hall's line at this time goes loose and Ireland sees upon it at the back end of the line out and they have a penalty now. Yeah, so maybe just a little bit of lack of composure there. Scotland really need to keep their composure in this first half. Ireland are really getting off to the best of starts, really struggling to get their hand on the ball. That's something they'll be very conscious of today because, while well, Scotland need to keep themselves in the game at the, at, well, we in the first half line, hour. Yeah. Ireland really, if things are to go their way, right, they, they really need to start to get an upper hand psychologically, if nothing else. Step out, here you go. who just keeps this Irish side ticking over. Big day for the best family as well. Off him in the air. It's a little bit. Squint, but it comes on Ireland's side. Swing it out! No hands, blue, step! Stringer will whip out those passes. Quick service all day long. Another Irish penalty. And quickly taken by Stringer. And O'Connell sets that huge frame forward and a massive drive up to the Scottish 22. Now carried on by Limmy. And already a real spear to the Scottish heart. A little chip from Stringer. Cusseter's there and the ball bounces into touch and Scotland under fierce pressure. Well, well Scotland have been a little bit hesitant in possession so far. None of that from Ireland. The first opportunity that Peter Stringer got to to run at this Scottish defence from that short tap penalty. He took it. And taken athletically at the back by Kelly Brown for Scotland. Stay. His fingernails saving Scotland there. And that roundhouse kicking style from Dan Parks makes a good deal of ground. 
Yeah, so Scott will be happy enough to get away with that again. Maybe not the best use of the kick there from Peter Stringing on that occasion. This is the run from O'Connell. What a, it was a great line coming back against the grain and just too much pace there for Gavin Kerr. I'm thinking of Murrayfield, but I'm not sure. Ireland, Ireland is the cry. we get Philip Matthews to do a head count, but there must be 20,000 in here. Stringing again, sets free that back line. Tackle a move, no hands! And now it's with O'Driscoll. And they keep on driving. The tackle going in on Dennis Leamy, but still Irish ball. Just biding their time. Horgan. Run now, leave it! Move tackle! The up on either side is... He's trying his hardest to get out of there with scrum. Ireland try and hack it free, but they will have the scrum. Yes, and Ireland producing some good quick rock ball there. Didn't really have the Scottish defence in any real trouble, but showing a sign of intent. Scotland really choosing with what possession they've had to really try and attack Ireland around the fringes, whereas Ireland are going wide and early. And both teams weigh exactly the same. It's all down to strength and technique today. Pause. Engage! Use it! That's all player! Bit of pressure and the pass looked a little bit forward to Darcy, but he emerges with it. Move! And now again options either side and Scotland struggling to shackle the Irish onslaught, which keeps on coming and into the 22. And an Irish penalty is the reward. Well, Kelly Brown's going to have to watch himself along with David Callum. The They're lingering too long around that breakdown area. That's the second time that Kelly's been pinged, so he's going to have to watch that. The last thing that Scotland need at this stage is to be down a man up front. We saw what Ireland did against England a couple of weeks ago when playing against 14. This is it again. This is the ball taken on by Easterby. Support from Hayes. Brown does well to turn Hayes there. And Callum's in there to, to rip the ball away. You might have thought that Ireland were a little bit unlucky. Or, sorry, Scotland were a little bit unlucky. The penalty maybe could have gone either way, but referee Dave Pearson didn't see any holding on. Close up before we crouch, eh? That seven Good minute mark has passed crouch. and no scores yet, though, so. That was great. <laughs> every right. Scottish cloud has a silver lining, but it may well be 3 0 after just about eight minutes yeah. because this is a fairly straightforward kick for Ronan O'Gara. The wind is really howling in from the west, but in this sheltered modern stadium, I'm not feeling it too much down at ground level. <laughs> 710 points for Ron Regara in an Ireland shot and three on the board for Ireland today. And that was after a period of fairly relentless pressure. Again, as so often, Limi is the fielding man at the restart. And Scotland can't afford to miss tackles, and Darcy is scything through and looking for runners alongside him. And immediately up to the halfway line. Regatta looking for Hickey, and O'Connell is there. And O'Connell just heaves himself up to the 10 metre line. Fair advantage. And the Ireland advantage is there. So they will attack, knowing that a penalty is coming and indeed has arrived. Timeout. Captain. Well, again, Gordon Darcy, just when you don't expect it, looking so dangerous. Let's see what Pearson has Would to say. Here. Martin, please? Yeah. We've had four penalties against your players on the ground already in the game. I'll not have it all afternoon. Yeah, no problem. You understand? understand totally. yeah. After the title, roll away. Time on. 
Yeah, well, David Pearson just reiterating what we were saying earlier on. On that occasion, it was Nathan Hines who was pinged for not rolling away from the ball. So Scotland going to have to be a little bit more careful of the breakdown. They're going to have to get away from the tackle area sooner, or they're going to be down to 14. This is the break from Darcy. Now, deep in this position, you could be forgiven for thinking Ireland were going to kick, and that's a poor miss by Rob Dewey. He can't give Gordon Darcy the inside shoulder like that. He's going to have to come up much more on his inside, but when you're playing against a guy with pace like that, you're, I guess you're reluctant to give him any any options inside or outside. He finds Easterby on the offload, and this is what Ireland are going to do all day. They'll run it from anywhere because they've got the confidence. Harder than the first. A little bit straighter. And a little bit squinter as well. And Scotland survived that particular Irish attack and chance of scoring. Yes, yeah, so O'Gara will be a little bit disappointed in not taking that one because if one thing Scotland have in Chris Patterson is, is probably statistically one of the most accurate place kickers in the Six Nations. So far, he hasn't really been given any opportunity to, to do that, which is largely testimony to the fact that Ireland territorially have, have dominated this game so far. The long 22 option from Dan Parks and Bugara with his makeup on is there. Inside, inside, Hugo no problem. Just inside, inside his wait, 22, wait, that wait. massive left boot, but a little oh, bit no. loose, and Hickey finds Gervin Dempsey, and he now sets off. And there's that flat pass to Horgan, who's got support, and manages to offload well, and a Driscoll, and back inside to Callahan. And the ball just goes loose, and Scotland just about survive, but there really are very early, very clear warning signs for Scotland. Yes, they're going to need to defend a lot wider, Scotland, because both O'Callaghan and O'Connell are now starting to get themselves into this game from, from fairly wide positions. It was a little dummy. Probably should have been given earlier, but he was, was probably a little bit concerned about the intercept. It just slowed things down enough to allow Simon Taylor to, to cut off O'Driscoll. And Ireland had the line-out. This time by Wallace. Inevitable creep forward from Ireland. Scotland try and regroup, but still they come. It's legal. And now the long pass out, and if it had gone to the hands of Dempsey, Hickey was waiting as well, but loose for a moment. Oh, you'd have to say, yes, uh, if that had gone to hand, that had try last. written all over it. And Ireland playing with a lot of confidence and no sign of any complacency. They're very committed there. That, that maul was a sign that the forwards are there to do the donkey work. They've been popping up in wide positions, but they're also there to do the donkey work. And this iron three-quarter is looking a pretty sharp as well, really keen to get the ball wide. And so far, just the last with pass. Lee, crouch, touch. Just stopping them from Pause extending that 3-0 lead. And look at the stats and look at the territory. And on this occasion, the stats. They really do tell the, the truth. The three points on the scoreboard, though, for Ireland so far. Another good clearing kick from Dan Parks, but still still inside the Scotland half. Yeah, so Frank Hatton won't be too concerned with that. Scotland have been a little bit a little bit Blues, quiet, yeah. probably playing a little bit within themselves, not with a huge amount of confidence, but they will have good periods, and to be only 3-0 down when they could have been 10-0 down, he'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Rory Best, Don't block the younger Best brother gets the call, Scotland compete, but O'Connell does well, and O'Gara finds Hickey, and again those runners sparkling up on the outside for Ireland, every time they get the ball, it seems so dangerous until they knock on, and surprise us all. Well that was great pressure at the, break, at the breakdown by Scotland, they got over there quickly in numbers, it wasn't easy to get to, but it was all that pressure that made it awkward for Peter Stringer. Just took his eye off it for a moment. And they did it legally that time as well. Come off. Peter Stringer, one of six Irish backs 
That's who cool, played like in 2007 years ago, and just one Irish back today is different from that starting lineup. Have a wee think about it. Philip Matthews will reveal all. A little bit later on. Touch, pause, engage. Down back row, both sides. A rare chance for Scotland to get hands on the ball, string some passes together. Dan Parks. It is the boot and doesn't quite stretch over the head of Gervin Dempsey. His turn to kick and chase. Taken by Scott Murray and Marcus De Rollo is there. And he's got Cusseter with him. And Cusseter now looks for friends and Southwell is charging up on his shoulder. Cusseter takes on Stringer. Dave Callum carries it forwards. Something for the Scots inside Murrayfield to cheer until the knock-on from Taylor are now dangerous. They'll come back for the penalty, though. Well, it just shows you what they can do when they get a bit of possession. That was better for Scotland. They really, from the moment they got that possession, they really started to take it out of Ireland and got them on the back foot. And if they had managed to get the ball wide, Scotland had numbers, but the pass didn't go to hand. And that gives Patterson a penalty opportunity just from 10 yards outside the Irish 10 metre line, straight in front of the posts. This should be bread and butter to him. Do you know the Irish player who is playing today in the back line who didn't play 2007 years ago? 2007 years ago, that would have to be Gordon Darcy. Gordon Darcy. Mm. Prize to Philip Matthews and any of you out there <laughs> who got that right. Mike Mullins played, but that apart, as we watch Chris Patterson lining this up, this is the same back line seven years ago. Talk about continuity and experience. We'll talk about experience as a kicker. Chris Patterson has landed his last 14 in the Six Nations. <laughs> 15 up, and the scores are level. And Scotland scarcely deserve it, but the scoreboard never lies. Well, exactly. They really need to respond. They did. The territory and the possession stats strongly favour Ireland. But that's not the way that, that's not what runs the scoreboard. And you were talking about continuity earlier on there. But when you look at this Irish three quarter, they're all the three quarters in, is exclusively Leinster, and they're playing week in, week out. They've been together some six or seven years, and now they're really starting to play off the cuff outside of training moves that have been practiced on the training paddock. And that's a sign of a, yeah. a back line that really know each other well. Marks finds only Dennis Leamy and into Gervin Dempsey. This time the Scottish defence is a little bit smarter, but still he scrambles his way into the Scottish half. O'Gara now. And Gordon Darcy. And on to David Wallace, breaks the first tackle, not the second or third. Dennis Hickey to kick this time. Saw a little bit of space. Southwell seizes upon it and sends his own kick. Just bobbling over the head of Ron O'Gara. This kick for touch doesn't make too much ground. Scotland will have the line out just inside the Irish half. But it's all good. Again, Scotland kicking force and Ireland to kick and give away the touch. So Scotland could seize a little bit of momentum here. You can just sense them working their way back into this game. Well, if they can do that, they'll start to put the pressure back on Ireland. A little bit squint from Scotland, and this time that one is spotted, and that is a chance wasted for Scotland. Yeah, so those are little things that that turn games and switch the momentum back the other way. They really had worked themselves into a good position there. That's an unforced error, and it puts the initiative back in Ireland's hands again. Too far apart, both sides. Don't move. Simon and Gordy. Crouch. Brothers Touch. in arms in the front Balls. row. Engage. Again, Darcy. He's not the biggest back, but he is so deceptively powerful. He's carried on by Rory Best. John Hayes, the bull from Bruff, tries to add 20 stone to the mix. Let's 
slower, slower ball for Ireland. But they have their chance now. And Horgan just shows and goes and tries to offload at the last. Scotland just edging back into this game. They're edging back in and they're slowing the ball up at the breakdown more, much more effectively now. Yeah, Horgan always, has, always open to, to trying to get the ball away in the tackle, but the tackle was good enough to, to prevent that. He gives the ball back to Scotland now. They need to do something from here. At least get themselves deep into Irish territory and put pressure on this Irish line out if they can. Touch. Pause. Engage. Stay down. Scotland looks pretty evenly matched there. And uh, Cox. Mark that. Switches and kicks, and out in the full, and a groan from the blue supporters, and all the way back. No, and again, an unforced error. Really didn't need that. With the cricket throw at the line out, the kick in touch on the full. Scotland can't afford to give away chances like that. He was pushed back against the grain. It wasn't where he was hoping to kick the ball. I think he was hoping to go long field left, but the pressure that Stringer put on his outlet, outside shoulder forced him back in. Though Stringer can take credit for that. John Hayes just digging his way forward. Scotland are to try and match Ireland today. Little things have to go right. Scottish defence up very quickly, and this time Driscoll is half seas, but he whirls round and stays strong. Stringer under pressure. And his friend is Munster teammate, his former schoolmate, Ron Logara. Does well with the kick. And again, Scotland really putting Peter Stringer under a lot of pressure at the breakdown. Ireland may need to watch that, may need to commit a few I'm more in, forwards to those rucks. Because it's it's preventing Ireland getting the ball as wide as they want. Sides, you come across and stand on your mark and don't close the gap, please. Don't close it, both sides. Don't block it, ninth. Instructions clear from Dave Pearson. Knocked on, knocked on green. And Scotland just about survive with an Irish knock on. He was just deflected by Paul O'Connell, who got into the air well. He was then taken by Leamy, but Wait David me, Pearson man. picked up the knock-on first. Let's come off. Crouch. Touch. Pause. Engage. Stay down back row, both of you. A chance for Scotland and a chance for Southall to stretch his legs and then kick as Chris Patterson was crying out for the ball. But into touch it goes, and we will go down to get the thoughts of uh, Gregor Townsend. Well, it's not been the best 20 minutes for, for both sides. Ireland started very strongly, but their passing hasn't been the most accurate, and Scotland have, have given up ball at crucial times when not under uh, any serious pressure. So both teams will be looking to, to, to put some points on the board and get some more phases put together. And try and steal the occasional line-out. Defences up in a swarm. Cassett are just chuntering away to his friends in the forwards, marshalling the troops, and Dan Parks finds touch once more, and this time edges Scotland into the Irish half. Yes, Ireland now is starting to make a couple of little errors, giving up a line out there against a, a good Scottish line, it has to be said, but they won't, they won't want that to repeat itself because if they're gonna if they're gonna be able to run at this this Scottish side, they're gonna need to be able to to dominate their own ball at the line out. They take it cleanly on that occasion. Callahan was the catcher and now this back line is set free again and Driscoll does so well to offload in the tackle, but more Scottish tackles rein in. Still the ball with Ireland and O'Connell. Punching through a couple of holes in the Scottish defence, and now O'Gara with the kicking option. He saw the space, and Southwell is scuttling back and has it and has to be quick. Wait, wait. 
it has a mighty left hoof. Shane Horgan is all the way back in the Irish half. His turn to kick, Lament is there. And now Lament has a little bit of space in the crowd, urge him to go, but Sean Lament does now, and Lament is through, and has support, and Chris Patterson is there, and Hickey is upon him, and seizes Patterson inside the 22, and Scotland's attack dies with an Irish penalty. But Murrayfield rises to a roar, and the players are getting frustrated. Well, it was a great tackle by Hickey, but not only did he make the tackle, he got to his feet, and Patterson was paying for holding on. Irish players came in to take the ball quickly because they wanted a quick tap and then took exception when, when Scotland wouldn't let it go. But that's all handbags. Don't expect anything, anything to happen from there. And this is it again. Hit pretty hard with a handbag, but this was Lament's break. Yes, Lamont does well to keep the ball alive. He finds Patterson. Hickey lost none of that pace, so he was right on. See, he got on his feet. Patterson was pinged then for holding on. This is a side angle. Look at that. Uses his momentum to roll under on, onto his knees. And Patterson holding on. He's staying on his feet. And if we just run that on, we'll just see the penalty. This is it again from behind. Got Stringer's accidental knee and boot in the face as well. Yeah, well, that, that's where Patterson may well have got hit or hurt. Well, Dennis Hickey was struggling with a back spasm yesterday in training. They left it until the very last minute today to see if he was okay. He seemed to be fine when chasing down Chris Patterson there. Well, it might just be a bit of a wake up call for Ireland because they were starting to let Scotland come back into it. Having said that, Scotland were fighting them played their own part in that as well, but challenging hard the line outs and starting to run at the Irish, but maybe just a wake-up call, a little a bit of a sharpener that they need to force their way back into this game, because at the moment it's teetering on the balance. So here come Ireland again to try and launch their own piercing movement. Gara does well and still crawling his way forward. O'Connell, and he is a massive presence for Ireland. David Wallace, a couple of Scots take him around his midriff. from Best and Away! still the Irish forwards are being asked to do the work. Still that Scottish defence holds true, but Ireland are making a, a yard here, a couple of yards there. Now the backs get a chance again. This is Darcy. This time Look he's now. upended. Horgan tries to swat aside a couple of tackles. And ever closer come Ireland to the Scottish 22. Phase after phase. We're making some ground, but not vast areas. No, that's it, was they're, they're making some ground, as you say, Andrew, they're really not troubling the Scottish defence. They're giving them far too much time to organise themselves and react. He's legal. Huge tackle coming in, and Shane Horgan that just lifts aside in defence. Very flat pass, which is taken eventually by Dennis Hickey. No way through there, but he does well. Backs and forwards in unison, driving, hammering through the... Part of the Stay Scottish back. defence. O'Driscoll, what magic does he have? He has a forward pass in his top hat. And another fist or two coming, and O'Driscoll and Patterson involved, and Darcy as well, and others. Leave it. And it's ugly at Murrayfield. No, yeah, there's obviously a little bit of tension there on both sides. Yeah. Not sure really what sparked that, but it looked like a little bit of afters. Maybe he'll just go reacting to something in the tackle or after the tackle. 
Not sure that David Pierce is going to make any sense of it, though. Unless the touch judge has seen something in it. Yeah. I'll tell you what I've seen. After I'd blown the whistle for the forward pass, 13 green went through. We're going to penalise him. Penalise 13 green. Brilliant, thanks very much. 13 green, Nigel. Well, 13 green, as almost everyone in rugby knows, is Brian O'Driscoll. 13! But he was clearly reacting to something. Well, unless he was taking out some frustration because from what the touch judge said. You stop playing. You're meant to be setting an example, I'll not have any more of it, OK? That's fair enough. Penalty against you. Back ten, please. Only me. Only you. <laughs> well, you can hear he's stunned to be singled out. Well, here it is again. This is after the forward pass. Ah, no, Patterson came in on O'Gara, and that's what O'Driscoll's reacted to. The touch judge hasn't seen that initial incident at all. Well, there was a late swinging arm coming in from Chris Patterson. And O'Driscoll was the minder coming in to make amends. Yeah, that's the late hit. That was fairly innocuous, to be honest, but uncalled for, probably. End result, line out to Scotland on the halfway line, taken by Murray. <laughs> After the madness of a couple of weeks ago, Scotland would be very pleased indeed with three all after nearly half an hour. Park's kick is charged down and straight into the arms of O'Gara. He has support and Ireland surely now will have the try. And it is O'Gara himself who finishes. And Scotland have done it again. Well, yes, you'd have to say that Scotland have given up that seven points because there really was no pressure there. The ball was cleanly won. And it's just given Ireland a little nose and friend that they were looking for but probably didn't deserve. They were starting to get sucked into a, a ruck ball, ruck game, which really is not suiting them. That was great by O'Gar. He was up, gave Dan Parks absolutely no time whatsoever. But boy, did Scotland make him work for it. It looked like he was home free. That looked like Darcy was home free, but he wasn't still... Easterby wasn't home free either. And he who started it finished it. Yeah, he must have thought all he had to do was pin his ears back, but that pass just delayed Darcy enough to load a roll to get to him. Easterby was up there well in support and again played the ball out of the tackle. Against the run of play, it has to be said, but he'll take it all the same. For Scottish fans, not quite as horrifying a story as two weeks ago against Italy, but the plot line is similar. It is O'Gara's seven points. And that is now the difference between the sides. Well, I would take a lot of encouragement still from a Scottish perspective. It's a mistake, yes, but they've got themselves back into this game. And they've subdued Ireland for large parts of this first half. And they've got something to work on. Scotland managed to take that restart and a chance for the forwards to drive their way up to the Irish line within six metres straight away from the restart. Gavin Kerr picks and goes. Doogie Hall picking up and digging away himself. Sean Lamont is in there lending a bit of weight. And still Scotland come three metres but the ball is almost lost behind the back. And they will have the scrum, and may be grateful for that. It's just a tackle, got but what a chance. He was legal. David Wallace nearly ripping yeah. that ball clear. He gives a wry shake of the head there. He so nearly turned that ball over. And that's lack of concentration for Paul O'Connell. He takes all those balls usually. Now Scotland get in behind Ireland here, and they opt to go tight again. I have to wonder whether they're not better going wide and just fancying their chances by stretching this Ireland defence, but they've got a good scrum. Five yards out, and a lot of wits to work with. Ah. Yeah, it's still favouring Ireland, essentially 70-30, but that's a big change from 85-15. They've clawed themselves back into a position where they're 
give themselves a good chance to, to stay in touch, touch. coming up to half-time. Murrayfield will will this Scottish scrum to drive over the Irish line, but they'll have to wait and do it again. Let's get quick thoughts from Keith Wood. You're going to bind up and you're going to it's stay extraordinary as it stands at the moment, Andrew. Please. Ireland don't seem to have played at all. They don't seem to be actually doing anything in or having enough discipline come, come um, any time they get into the 22. And I think Scotland will be very happy where they are, even having given away such a silly try. So held at the back by Callum. And it is the back to get the chance. It is Dewey, the battering ram, who's well brought down. But quick ball for Scotland and a chance and a mighty pass out to Southwell. And Southwell pins and goes. Patterson on his shoulder. Travel off it, release now. And a squeeze. No way through. No, don't play him. They'll have to try again with a slower ball as Ireland reset their defence. Murray comes in to try and clear out. Ireland disrupting, and Ireland may well have pinched the ball. Knock on by Blue. Knock on by Blue. Irish scrum. Well, that was good work at the breakdown by Ireland. They absolutely have to do something to disrupt that ball. They couldn't afford to give it to Scotland quickly. Scotland been so successful so far in doing that, but Ireland turning the tables there. We saw that quick ball created the chance, but at the breakdown it was Ireland who did better. Yeah, that was good clearing out by Nathan Hines. He really did help to free that ball up. But still Ireland keep at it. Easterby, Wallace both at the, at the base of that. Dewey really getting no change out of the midfield defence. But what he is able to do is free up quick ball, which really stretched the Irish defence. Nicky makes the tag he's back on his feet again. But and who's that? That's down. That's Was that a two-on-one of Southwell and Street? It was. It was. And at that stage, Dennis Higgy decided to come in on his man. He wasn't sure that Southwell was going to be defended. And if he had had the time to get the pass away, Scotland would have been in. And it's just taken a bit of a knock to the shoulder, but he's all right. That's he's all right. to Ireland, five yards out. He may be feeling a little bit sheepish as well. It is an Irish scrum. He's, he slipped and your bind slipped. Okay? Closer, please, boys, closer. Both sides. Step. Good. This is the side of the Murrayfield pitch which does Touch. get a little bit muddy Four. in the shadow of the West Stand. Three. Scottish penalty. Nice front row going straight to the ground. Well, if we're going to have a look at this. Number three, straight in. Well, uh, Dave Pierce is on the other side, and what he's saying is that John Hayes was 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 going in, boring in, not not scrumming square. That gives Patterson a chance to bring things back a little bit. And again, oh, Ireland from that kickoff, class, just just that lack of concentration after they scored, giving up another three-point opportunity to Patterson. <laughs> Then you'd have to fancy his chances from here. Thanks, you. All right. I mentioned earlier, a long time ago was the last time he missed a kick. And Frank Haddon sits up in the stand and will be satisfied. Scotland have yielded a try, but they are within four points. Yes, they'll be happy. They, they haven't replied themselves with a try. Ireland did well to defend that. But a 10-6, it's all to play for. And they're still very much in this game. They're frustrating Ireland, and Ireland really not responding. They're not playing with the same wits and with which they started the game. They're starting to get sucked into this forward game, which is something they really don't want to do. Cossetel takes the restart and finds Dave Callum. And move, hands out! Dave Callum is just a re-sign for Edinburgh, one of the Scottish players is staying, and Parks. That kick, and Dennis Leamy has it, thinks about the quick one. Nobody there to take it. And Dan Parks is trying to settle himself after that charge down. Yes, another charge down at Murrayfield. He's a line out, he's a line. Stay out. Yeah, well, so far, 
Scott will be disappointed at that. Four for three, that's not that's good. Ireland lot. somewhat better at nine to one in terms of lineouts one to last. I thought you were talking odds for a moment. Five, get out of there! Just a little bit slower today for Ireland, but there is a reason, and there's the penalty. Yes, yeah, so well, they're choosing to take Scotland on around the fringes, which is not the way they started this game. And I have to, I have to say, they looked an awful lot more dangerous when they were playing with more wits on the ball. Yeah, that in itself, win. though, can Big become a little bit predictable. So variety side, really is the key. We've got uh, three minutes. Okay, we'll have a goal. Yeah, three. Points? Yeah. Points. Ryan of Driscoll asking how long. Three minutes. The answer, and the kick for goal is the. Is the decision. It's been a game which has only occasionally sparked yeah. into life. It's uh, another strange, almost subdued atmosphere around Murrayfield. Yes, and I'm sure Ireland would have come here with a, a certain amount of healthy apprehension, if you like, and respect for this Scottish side, particularly Scotland on the rebound. They'll be very, very conscious that the party could very, very easily be put, but I just think that they're playing a little bit within themselves because of that. Gara's try, which built Ireland's lead, and he stretches it, and it is once again seven points. Well, Ryan is just going to be happy just to keep that, forward, that scoreboard nudging forward. He will be looking to get into the, the changing room, though, and Eddie Assolen will want to refocus his men because they can't afford to continue like this. On the other hand, this is exactly what Scotland want. They've kept themselves well within this game. Just over a minute and a half of this game remaining. Limi again under pressure as he takes the restart. That safe Shut Irish up. ball. Wait! With him! Never misses touch, finding only Chris Cusser. Dan Parks now. Finds Hugo Southwell, Patterson alongside him. Three Irish Last jerseys. Three, leave it holding him fast. This is Rob Dewey. Leave it green! Ran into an even heavier man in John Hayes. Still in, no! Dan Parks, <laughs> flat pass to Sean Lamont. Hands out! Scottish penalty and Ireland are committing some errors. They could be You're fine. a long, long way in front of Scotland, but Ireland will have a, uh, Scotland will have a chance to close this yep. gap again. Same both yeah, ways. Here's the, you know, like the breakdown hard. situation. Simon Issy made the initial tackle. Now he's got to make an effort to roll away from there, as, jo as does John Hayes. Now it's no obvious Irish hand on it, but David Pearson saw something. Hugo Southwell is heading off, afflicted by that knock he took in that charge towards the try line. On will come Rory Lamont in his place. So the Lamont brothers will be lining up for Scotland, the best brothers on for Ireland. But uh, Rory Lamont will have to wait and watch as Chris Patterson takes the final kick of the half. Another one sails through, the whistle goes and uh, Rory Lamont will have to wait for his arrival. But Scotland are still in this game. As much through Ireland operating in third gear as Scotland playing a decent game. Yes, Ireland started brightly and dominated territory possession, but they've slipped back a little bit. They didn't start with the same sharpness and eagerness that they started the half with, yeah, sure. and they're going to have to refocus and kick off the second half the way they did the first if they're going to work themselves back into a winning position. Just one try from Ronald Gara, but just four points in it. Ireland lead 13-9 at the break. And it's a fitting end to this year's IRP Sevens World Series. For the first time in 14 years, we'll host a major international Sevens event here, featuring alongside Scotland, the likes of Fiji and New Zealand. Tickets are just £10 per day, or £15 for the road days. Check out www.edmosevens.com. And if you're interested in volunteering at the event, then check out the Scottish Rugby website. So it's appropriate as our half-time entertainment today is going to be a 7th 
misleading by our seven squad. But first, I'm joined here on trackside by Scotland legends John Jeffrey and Roy Lilo, who have been slightly overshadowed by the girls who just arrived in the corner of the stadium. John, we're going to start with you, Vic. You're a big seven fan. What makes it such a special game? I think uh, there's a man over there who played football, he probably scored goals, play off the game, he scored tries. The chance to do that in sevens is it's great fun. I think it's great for fitness development, it's great for skills development, and uh, I'm pretty really, because I wanted to get some medals to be perfectly honest. And you want a lot more than Roy, then I can tell you that. But uh, no, it's great fun to play, it's great fun to watch. Fantastic, thanks John. Roy, you, you managed Scotland in the IRB 7 circuit. How do you feel about the final coming against Murrayfield? I think it's great starting here at Murrayfield. Uh, what I'll do, I'll highlight for the Scottish public just how, uh, how good some of the minor nations are, and the skill levels in these countries, the way they're developing. And, uh, you know, it'll be a, I hope a big town come up here at Murrayfield to support them because it's a sort of carnival atmosphere. So, Draws a very serious competition in the pitch. People Thank you, John. Plenty of entertainment and atmosphere at Murrayfield during half-time. We hope for more in the second half. We hope for... Irish fans will be hoping for a, a, a slightly higher skill level, a higher energy level, Philip. Yes, absolutely. We should be able to tell pretty soon on from the moment Ireland get their hands on the ball what Ariel Sullivan has been saying to them uh, in that change room. From Scotland's perspective, they want more of the same. They just need to keep doing what they were able to do in the first half. Chris Patterson under pressure Seven. deep in the Scottish 22. Hands that off. one change has happened now. Rory Lamont is on for Seven. Hugo Southwell. And Dan Parks this time shuffles it across the back line to Marcus oh. De Rollo. Mm, well, they're kind of looking at each other in terms of uh, what was going on there. They made as if they were going to move the ball away, but it, in the end it was just to make some space for Seven. De Rollo to get that kick away. It was high risk. It was never on to run from there. And instantly, an Irish line-out in the oh, me, Scottish yeah. 22, and More safely out. taken, safely taken Oof. by O'Connell. The first Irish drive crumbles, and they try once more. Offload to no hands. huge beast John Hayes, and once more they drive, and they are getting closer. And they, well, the referee is. Captain. Calling forward the Scottish captain. They obviously haven't heeded the warning from the first half about not rolling away. He's made no attempt. He's slowed quick ball. He's going to have a cool then, David. It's not David. Chris Patterson imploring, but Nathan Hines is off, and what a loss he will be for Scotland in the opening ten minutes of this half. Yes, because you could, the Scottish players could have been forgiven for for thinking that the first half was history, but those warnings were key. Pearson did let it go on a little bit in the first half, but he was in no mood to do the same thing in the second half. That's Nathan Hines. He needs to roll away and get out of there. At one stage, I thought Ireland were going to be pinged for stamping, but he made no attempt to get away from the ball. And now Scotland down to 14. Guess what? Ireland have kicked for the corner. Seven Scottish forwards against eight. 
their largest man is missing. And so Ireland will drive and drive again. Hands out! And that Scottish defence crumbles and creeps an Islander a metre short. Last foot! Sorry, lads. But Scotland remarkably emerge with the ball. They will have the scrum. Well, Ireland starting this second half the way they finished their first half, deciding Injury that last time out. they want to take the ball at this Scottish forward unit. Now, with seven men in this pack, maybe that's the right thing to do, but it definitely Ireland need to get a lot more wits in this game the way they did in the first ten minutes of the, of the first half. Don't want to be drawn into a big forward, mole, ruck, phase after phase, because... It didn't really stretch the Scottish defence in the first half. This is the turnover. Now, just too many Scottish defenders there. Scott Wally and Gavin Kerr He seems to won the ball, but it was turned over from there. That's good work by Scotland. And Scott Murray does look a bit groggy. Uh, maybe Scotland's ball, but with a seven-man scrum, there's going to be huge pressure on them. Yes, Ireland will really look to turn this one over if they can. Scotland get it away. All well and good, but... Touch! Balls! I think Scotland will dwell in the scrum too long. Both sides, wait for me, please! Both sides, wait for me! Crouch, touch, pause, engage. Let's go, some off. Well, Sean Lamont has joined the scrum, so it is an eight-man shove. Seven moves. Leave it green, lost. Stay. Stay six. Scotland still under the cosh. Hands off. Trying to make a few out. precious inches. The ball is Hands out and there green. for Ireland to seize Stay. upon. Still with Scotland, though. Five, please. No, edge their way green. ever further away from the line. Last foot, step. No, Parks is deep this time. This kick looks a little bit drunken, but it's done very well for him. And takes play all the way up to the just about the 10 meter line. This is a really key phase now for Ireland. They've got Scotland down to 14 men, and they really do need to make the most of this. So a bit of pressure on them now. They need to make the most of whatever possession they get, and this position it's at, at least come away with three points. A little bit of... Uh, after the ball had gone snapping from Gavin Kerr and Gordon Darcy off the ball as well. Ireland's line-out has been more impressive than Scotland so far, and they have. A chance once again, and it's O'Driscoll, as he has done so often, making ground, and quick ball for Ireland, and Dennis Limmy, they find support, and Shane Horgan looking for Hickey. But the ball just creeping forward. Oh, Dennis Hickey not too pleased with that, because that really did look like a certain try. That's the great offload. Now, Horgan really should have done better there. He had one eye on the defender and really wasn't aware where Hickey was. Wait me, it did it? look as though Rob Dewey had it covered all the same. Let's go, nine. But that's what Ireland need to do, move that away off the top. Let's Don't go. engage Scotland too much around the fringes because they've really had little, little to Close play up. from it so far. Touch. That was Touch. good continuity Touch. from Ireland. It's a game which is just lacking the fizz, the atmosphere, of course, inevitably, of the game at Croke Park. Nine. But Ireland have a, a chance, although Scotland ball. Yeah, Scotland ball, and it's all winding the clock down. Hines must have only have about five minutes left in the bin. No, he's got less than that, he's got less than, th less than four minutes. You're going the other way, Philip, six minutes. Uh, apologies, it's not a counter. Scotland have a little bit of space here, and this is Rory Lamont with his brother alongside him. But the younger brother goes himself. Leave it 12. He plays so well for Glasgow and gets his chance in Parks with the boot and a very big boot indeed over the head of Gordon Dempsey. And Scotland, who are just desperate to see that Sindon clock tick down, have a little bit of field to play with. Exactly, and the more 
the more territory they can get, the more time they can spend in, in Ireland's half during the remaining six or so Take minutes, the better. That'll start to frustrate Ireland as well, because they'll be conscious of the clock. at the lineup from Ireland, but John Hayes is at the back. No, seven, leave it! Lee tries to thunder through the middle. Carried on by Eight, Rory goals. Best. Seven! To steal! Hands up, no, don't go in! Gavin Kerr has been... No, sir! ...heaved out the way. On another break this time from O'Driscoll, and O'Driscoll has support, and this time Hickey does have the ball. And Hickey, does he have the pace? He's being hunted down, and just, just into touch. Well, that was great defending by Sean Lamont. If indeed he did make that tackle, not sure what Pearson's saying here. Is he, is he going upstairs? Looks like it. You. No indication from Hickey whether he felt he got in there or not. No try, please. Television match official today, Welshman Hugh Watkins, and it's his decision. And tellingly, the Irish side still staying very much in the Scottish 22. Don't know if that's a sign of lack of confidence or not. Yeah, he's touching well, clearly in touch, touching the corner flag. A good chance by Ireland, though. Again, when they've moved that ball wide quickly. They've looked very dangerous. And probably just a little bit disappointed they weren't able to convert that one. Touching the corner flag is touch. OK. Yeah, you can see Hickey had committed himself, one hand on the ball. There's no way okay, he's so going to be able to get no that away in the tackle no or Touching put it inside to Darcy. 22 dropout. So, 22 dropout it is. Time off. The touch 22. in goal beyond the try line. No so. Try. Ireland were waiting for the, the line-out. Ah, ah, ah. But it's Scotland's 22. No quick one, Chris. No, different ball, got to give them a chance. Uh, those little things just going Scotland's way at the moment. Behind. This could be telling if it gets down to the wire. The Irish camp, not quite safe. Concerned yet? They are in control of this game, but while that the lead remains just four points, anything can happen. Gordon Darcy just has a little think about Eight, things. Move, stay. It isn't quite the zip. Can O'Driscoll add it? A little bit of a forward pass to Limi, which it was. That's not the first time today, is it? There's been a two or three of those. Don't have to have a look at it. This player is overrunning things pass. slightly, just a little bit anxious, maybe. You just don't sense that Ireland are as sharp as they need to be. Time out, we lost a scum off, we can't yes. a scum without O'Driscoll him. did have to take a half a yard step backwards, Limi like wasn't expecting that, so his run then became... it forced the forward pass. It's all good for Scotland, though, this winding down the clock and it's frustrating Ireland, and pretty soon the pressure's oh, going to come back on them. And uh, any leg which needs to be rubbed will take all the t time over it that they can. I'll have a drink. That was well worked. Again. Hickey reckoned he'd committed himself at that stage to go in for the line himself. Wasn't too aware of Darcy inside him. Boys, this might be a change. Needed all of Lament's weight to shift him into touch. Uh, no, yeah, sir. they're just going to really burnt so. Rob Dewey on the outside, and that's the second time that's happened to him today. Darcy did it early in the first half. He's just going to need to push up a little bit tighter on that outside shoulder. He's got to go into the uh, scrum quicker, Chris, when that's set. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, that was 50-50, that's why I didn't blow it, you know? 3.27 yeah. stops for that strapping to Chris Cassata. Doesn't look too happy with life in general at the moment. The man from Wagga Wagga. But he's a real force in the Scottish pack. Come up both sides. Scotland will be Let's desperate go. to survive the final three and a half minutes. Crouch, touch, pause, engage. Stay last foot. It's a chance for 12. Rory Lamont. A little bit of a poke and a prod down the blind side, and Scottish forwards do it well. Crowd 
really wants something to lift Murrayfield. Cusseter has a look and then a little pop pass. Still the forwards just digging away and they will do so again. Penalty, and they will surely now have a kick at goal. Well, that's a great effort by Scotland, but again, Ireland offering up the points on a plate. Paul O'Connell just coming in from the side. And this Scottish pack of seven now playing as if they were eight. Sometimes that happens when you lose a man, you everybody else ups it just ups it a, a level or two. Yes, he really need to keep the hands off the ball, there was nothing to be gained there. Scotland weren't really offering any threat, they were just going to, to ruck to ruck. A little bit of patience required. So again, plenty of time taken over this kick. And a kick to reduce the deficit to just a single point. Why are Ireland off the pace? Scotland have obviously lifted their game from the performance against Italy, yeah, but yeah. There, there seems to be a lack of fizz from Ireland. There's a lack of fizz. They're at about 95%, and at this level, if you're not 100%, the things that make the difference between winning and losing and, and winning easily against England were really forcing things, were those little offloads in the tackle, everybody committed more aware in terms of where everybody else was, and they're just not fizzing at 100%. And that can make a huge difference at this level. a time when Scotland cursed the lack of kickers in the game of rugby but Chris Patterson is just about the very best now and he keeps Scotland in this game he gives them real hope because that gap is now just a single point and there is a little bit of noise from Murrayfield Cusseter evades the Oncoming tackles at the restart. And Parks again finds a, a good old touch down that far side and waiting in the wings. Nigel, Nigel. Is the badly behaved He's Nathan Hines. And Scotland have not lost any points in that ten minutes. In fact, quite the opposite. Exactly, they've gained three. Now I really need to focus now. Put that behind them. Scotland are back to full strength. They're going to have to lift it even more now because they were struggling to compete with 14 men. This will give Scotland a real boost of confidence having, having the ranks restored to 15. Ireland's line it again. Curves beautifully and they have the ball in midfield. Down out, 10 out. Don't stand on him. Oh! David Wallace Hands is out, out. shackled. I haven't seen too much of Wallace. Bugara tries to shimmy through a forest of blue shirts. Now it's out with Rory Best. The hook on his own spins and Move. Lamont eventually gets arms around him. Driscoll has to stoop to pick it up and the Scottish defence has time. Hands out, Blue! Ogara, here is David Wallace, and Wallace has pace, and he slips the tackle of Lamont, and Ogara is there, but bundled into touch by Cusseter. But that's what Ireland needs to do, they need to start taking on Scotland out wide, getting the ball away in the tackle, because so far taking them on around the fringes, through the forwards, has not really got given them any penetration whatsoever. Again, Wallace so strong in the tackle, it really wasn't going anywhere though, because Ogara was well marshalled into touch. Now, a bit of rejigging in the Scottish pack. Ali Hogg, just exiting stage right of the picture there, is on for Dave Callum. And Hogg is not a bad player for Scotland to have coming on. And well tapped back by Scott Murray. Rob Dewey, knees high and battering his way forward. And Dan Parks goes straight down the middle this time. Gervin Dempsey. Inside, loitering Nigel just inside his 22 and Murray would have been well advised to let that go it may have been out before he caught it Irish ball 
Yeah, as well, clearly the touch touch felt that Murray caught the ball and then oh, made contact oh, oh, with the line. Right. Yeah, his, and that he called please, that right. Please, please. His foot wasn't please, on the please, line please. before he caught it. Mistake, and Ireland will look to make Scotland pay from this line out. Scotland haven't had much change from the Irish line out. That squint by Option. two or three yards. Option. No, that was a poor throw by Best. Oh. At a key time as well when they needed the ball. The initiative back to Scotland. Ah, some noise around Murrayfield. There are some people in here. Capacity, 67,800. Hasn't been too much noise from them so far. Goes out! Kelly Brown has moved to number eight now, and Lament spills it, went backwards. The Rollo opts to kick, and straight out, all the way back. Well, again, Scotland just don't have the composure when moving the ball through the hands wide in positions like that. Lamont really should have held on to that. And that's, that's just getting, that's just knowing each other. That's just confidence. But it's not there at the moment. Might be better playing that more territorial game because it's frustrated Ireland so far. Simple one to the front this time for Ireland. The Driscoll. Even Ireland's back line is misfiring now. Lamont sees one of the green shirts in front of him, but muscles his way into the Irish half. Taylor carries it on. Hands up, seven. Advantage over. Parks. Hands up. And Patterson is upended in the crash ball. Parks this time kicks, and Shane Horgan is watching it carefully, and it's racing beyond his reach. And he has to be smart, but his kick into touch gives Scotland a line out. Just about seven metres, eight metres out from the Irish line. Yes, that's what Park should have really been doing a lot more of today, but he's done it now. He's put real pressure on Ireland, putting the ball deep into their own into their 22. The ball is wickedly bouncing there. It forced Horgan to kick. It's given Scotland line out, and then a great attacking position. And welcome back once again to the noise of Murrayfield. Doogie Hall almost can't hear the call. Taken by Scott Murray once again. How often he's done that in 83 caps. Heave cry the crowd. But no forward What's momentum that, at the moment. What's that, Tim? Even Cusseter ending a little bit of a, a shove. Stay, stay, Out at the back one, by Lamont at the moment. No, Scotland really need to do something with this because if they just continue to go to rock them all, it's not gonna, it's not gonna threaten this Irish line. They need to get the ball wide. And Dougie Hall is being carried backwards by Paul O'Connell, and Ireland will have the scrum. And it was yeah, coming; it was obvious. It was, and it's just a lack of confidence. They don't really have the confidence in themselves to know that they can threaten out wide. They're going to have to play much more expansive when they get themselves into those positions because neither side is really gaining anything by just putting the ball around the fringes with it through the forwards. Paul O'Connell really getting the better. Dougie Hall there, driving him back and forcing the turnover. Rory Lawson is on for Chris Cusseter. And his first duty is to try and Halt this Irish attack and Paul O'Connell accidentally running into his own man there, but Scotland will have the scrum. Yeah, and Ireland put themselves under a lot of pressure, but it just shows you if Scotland can can play the territorial game, the pressure will be will come on Ireland. O'Callaghan offloads to O'Connell, he just yeah, runs into Darcy. But Darcy really needed to be out of the way there. He knows himself what's coming as he puts Relax, his hands please. to his head. Close Another chance please, for Scotland. For those of you who don't know, Rory Lawson, Gloucester's Rory Lawson, son of Alan Lawson, scrum half in the 70s, grandson of Bill McLaren. Hope you're well, Bill. Carried on by Kelly Brown now. Green! Green! Just a point in it. And just over 20 minutes remaining. A Scotland of men That's over in the right here, they've got to get this wide. 
as you mentioned, do they have the confidence in their backs? They will carry it on Please still through their five. forwards. Still in Possession is an even split in the second half, but at still. the moment, territory. Although Ireland have had the bulk of it, at the moment Scotland are living in the Irish 22, not making much headway. Lawson looking for it. Back deep to Chris Patterson. And the drop goal attempt is wide, but the advantage was there for Scotland in any case, and Chris Patterson will have a, a far steadier, safer kick at goal. Yeah, well, this should push Scotland into the lead, and I was just going to say the only way they're going to score if they, if they continue to play like that in, in the Ireland 22 is for getting a penalty, and so far... Ireland have come up with the goods and they've given them the opportunities there, a little bit of indiscipline at, at mall time there, or at ruck time I should say, from Ireland. This is really going to put the pressure back on Ireland, they now are going to have to start chasing this game. Well, I think everyone watching, even though Ireland have been a little bit off colour, were expecting Ireland to pull clear. 20 minutes to go and... Scotland are in front through the unerring boot of Chris Patterson. And there is a chance of what would still be, even though Ireland have been underperforming, what would still be a remarkable upset. It would be, but this, this might just force Ireland to play the game that they need to play. It's quite clear that Eddie O'Sullivan want, needs them to move the ball through the hands. Jerry O'Flannery comes on now for Rory Best, and I've no doubt that Jerry Flannery will be bringing on some instructions. They're going to have to get this ball wide because they're not going to win this in a penalty shootout. They certainly don't want it to get to that level either. And changes rolling onto the field for Scotland as well. Alan Jacobson will come on in the Scottish front row. Gavin Kerr leaving. Ross Ford on as well there, number 16. On for Dougie Hall in the hooker position. Different faces, but the same job to try and do for Scotland to hang on to this lead now for Ireland to try and find the form that has lifted them into the world's elite. It is an individual kicking style from Dan Parks, but again, he finds a decent enough touch. A couple of other matches, of course, coming up this weekend. Straight after this, Italy against Wales, that's a half past three kickoff in the Stadio Flaminio in Rome and uh, tomorrow of course England against France at Twickenham A chance for Ireland through Darcy once more and the ball was loose and anybody's the Irish supporters complain but the ball is free and it's a chase Dennis Hickey will win it but the ball is spilled a little bit and there for anybody now, finally seized by touch. And Scotland are back into the Irish 22. Well, very much so, Ireland putting themselves under a lot of pressure. They are the ones that are lacking the composure on the ball at the moment. Just panicking a little bit. Again, Scotland challenging hard at the breakdown and getting that turnover. And putting themselves in a great position with a line-out to come. And the way things have been going, if they can hold on to possession, this is the cutback ball. This style, Gar's been guilty of taking a little bit too much out of the ball. But on that occasion, he released it quickly. But Arnold just weren't able to secure the ball at the, at the base of that ruck. They left it unprotected. A long line out just taken at the back by Hines and now carried on by Rob Dewey. He knows one way to go. But eventually he goes backwards. Strong Irish defence. And, and he's they turned. have turned it over. They have the penalty. And another Scottish chance spurned let's get the thoughts of Gregor Townsend again just by the way uh, Ireland have played especially in the second half it's this game is there for Scotland to win I think Ireland are, are causing themselves a lot of problems by the way they're trying to attack from slow ball Scotland defensively have been outstanding today they've shown a lot of character and they're not giving Ireland much space to play so Scotland have the advantage they've not really taken it so far they've made mistakes in crucial areas that was another one Rob Dewey was a bit too upright into contact but uh, the onus is on Ireland to do something to change this final result. And another Irish mistake, missing touch from the penalty, and carried forward by Rory Lamont. And 
Oh, Scotland hit the line with a bit of pace once more. Simon Taylor. Hands out! This is Alan Jacobson. A shimmy from the Away, Green! Hey, shoot it. Move, Green! And the Irish tackles pour in. Hands out! And again, it's Simon Taylor who's asked to do the donkey work in midfield. Advantage, throwing it down. Scottish Seven advantage green. at the moment, carried forward by Sean Lamont. He goes a little bit further. And still Scotland come, Patterson onto De Rolo, who is thrown backwards. But they will come back for the Scottish penalty. And Keith Wood, what is happening with Ireland today? Andrew, I'm really, I'm really struggling to, to actually figure out. They're just not playing at all. They're, they're, they're playing in a very flat fashion mentally. They're not being aggressive. They're being very, very sloppy. Um, they're ultimately getting what they deserve at the moment. And uh, I mean, Scotland are now playing sensible. They're playing decent amount of territory possession. Um, they're plugging away constantly, and they're getting the penalties. And the Patterson in this form, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I thought earlier on, they maybe should have gone for the corner or gone for a scrum to try and get some scores because I expected Ireland to actually score tries, but Scotland are the team that more likely than scoring at the moment. We're just watching as we look at uh, Chris Patterson lining up yet another kick. Brian O'Driscoll was waving his arms furiously and shouting instructions at his troops. And 15 minutes remaining. It's another chance for Chris Patterson. Success. 20 in a row have gone between the posts for Chris Patterson now, but in the context of this game, so important as well. Scotland, five points clear of triple crown chasing all bar France conquering Ireland. And is there a huge upset coming at Murrayfield? Andrew Henderson is coming on for Scotland. And off goes Marcus De Rolo. Well, as Keith Wood said, Ireland are getting exactly what they deserve. They're the ones that are lacking in the composure. You'd have to say the sharpness has been knocked off them for that English game, the euphoria of that game. There's complacency is set in, and they just don't have the performance that's required against Scotland today, who are in no mood now to lose this game. Well, knock on immediately from the restart from Scotland, but still Irish Hands ball. Up. You do sense that Ireland, if they can find another gear, a five-point lead is not much. Leave it through. Darcy this time is held in midfield. Scotland will be desperate to salvage something from the Six Nations, which has seen them lose to Italy, but. A simple penalty given away and a simple chance it will be for Ronald O'Gara. Yes, he needs to take this one. He needs to get them back in touch again. I can't see O'Driscoll wanting to go for the corner here. Shot. This is the carry by O'Callaghan. Those legs really pumping hard as well to stay on his feet. And again... Got it, yeah. Who's that guilty, Alan Jacobson? Nigel. Just guilty for lying on the ball. Have a word with Chris there. Tell him I'll put another one in if I have to. For the captain. And if Scotland have a, a kicker par excellence, Ireland are not too shabby in that department either. And it's not Ron Magara's most difficult. <laughs> Two points in it. And plenty of time for Ireland to hit back, and they have plenty of firepower to do so. Yes, there's loads of time left in this game. They need to clean more from this kickoff, though, because they don't want to play any much, many more of this game in their own their own half than they can afford to, because they've been giving away far too many penalties. Easterby's just come off, and Best has just come on, so they can expect a big ball-carrying game from him now. He'll be looking to get himself back in this into this game very, very quickly. Watch the long-haired figure in the green shirt of Neil Best. He will put himself about the park. Move, move. Ireland running from the 22, and the ball is taken well. And the kick ahead. 
And Scotland have to be wise to this. And Rory Lamont under pressure. And does very well indeed. Quickly taken by Stringer. Oh, I'm sorry, no problems. Well, that was a great decision by O'Driscoll. It's a great percentage kick forcing Scotland to get back. They've made a good 30 yards from that play. No! Gordon Darcy saw a little chink of light, but it quickly disappeared. Shane Horgan straight through the middle. He's a massive figure to try and marshal. Five, six. Irish penalty coming. And there it is. Well, is it funny when Ireland go further behind? Now they start to play because there's an awful lot more responsibility being taken there. Darcy made a very, very definite effort to get past the gain line. Players were on his shoulder, the ball was won very, very quickly. Horgan then looked dangerous and they forced the penalty. This is from the ruck. That was a, a poor enough pass. There was no real structure. The penalty had already been conceded. So, can Ireland put themselves one point in the lead now? Still, that's not going to be enough. Well, the only try of the game has come to that man so far, Ronan O'Gara. He has scored all of Ireland's points. He will do his very best to sneak Ireland in front. Well, he looked long and hard after it, but eventually he picked up the tee as it sneaked through inside the upright, and Ireland are in front. And if Scotland are to cause that massive upset, they have to hit back. Yes, they do, and Ireland will want to take this one quickly, or cleanly, I should say. And if Scotland had put this one hanging in the air, it does, but it's, it's probably too far to offer any real challenge for the ball. And the carrier is David Wallace. Once again, Gordon Darcy just pins his ears back and goes. No, he was all right, that's him. Oh, calling for offside, but, well, now they have the advantage. They still have the ball. And they will eventually take no that advantage. penalty. First offence, knock on blue no. scrum green ball. It's not a scrum. Ten minutes to go, a single point in it. Yes, a single point in it, and neither side wants to spend any time in their own half because that's going to be the winning or the losing of this game. One kick Touch. could se secure the, the lead for Touch. Ireland Engage. or could turn it around for Scotland. A well, point to make plenty of talk about Ireland possibly competing, challenging the All Blacks later this year in the World Cup. The All Blacks would not be playing like this. No, absolutely not. And in fairness, I don't think Ireland would be trying to play like this against the All Blacks. There's no question that they're, the tag of hot favourite is a little bit too big for even this Irish team to handle because it's not been a vintage performance from them. Gara under pressure again. And Rory Lamont is there. Another Sean again alongside him and outside him now, but the pass doesn't find him. And Ireland get a chance. Horgan, but he's well held before he can pull the trigger. And they'll come back for a Scottish scrum. Scrum, lads. First offence was forward, green, scrum, blue. Mm, li uh, scrum little blue. things like that, little decisions, little mistakes. That can mean the difference between winning and losing. That was the intercept by O'Driscoll. No, he's still trying to make something out of this. Horgan has the ball, but... Crouch. Touch. Knock on came before Engage. that. Fellas, we're going a little bit far apart. Let's bring it back together and put the new crew props on. He's been hiding today, Frank Haddon. He's in there somewhere. Closer, fellas, please. Crouch. Touch. Pause. Engage. Get it in now. This would be a, a win to rank alongside his wins against France and England. The Irish crowd try and lift their players. It's all a bit ugly from that scrum for Scotland. Back to the halfway line. Committee deciding what to do. Hines goes, takes a couple of henchmen with him. Release five! And Ireland will have the scrum. 
Scotland looking a little bit bereft of ideas there. Oh. Uh, it's been a feature of this game that neither side in possession at, the, at those breakdowns has really made any significant progression. They can see that the pass is completed. Ireland on the stats should be a good 10 points, 15 points clear, but they're not. They haven't taken their chances, they haven't made the most of their possession. Off him, Nigel, push him. Ireland switch and the back line shuffles round to the left, and now they have a chance, and Dempsey is held and Side can't empty. quite get that ball away but they have a penalty Side empty, no side empty, the man coming in from the side, side. coming in from the side but well, again Ireland starting to play with a little bit more purpose something they Must didn't do for gate. large parts Seven, of the first 12, half and the clouded. second half they've looked much more dangerous when they've they've started to unsettle the Scottish defence give them no time to react at this stage they came late with this run Darcy again just making that half break getting it away in the tackle stretching the Scottish defence and on this occasion was it didn't yield, yield a clean break it's given them the, the penalty opportunity yes Pearson pretty clear that that was a, an offside position for Rory Lawson which gives Ronan O'Gara an opportunity now he's, he's just inside the Scottish 10 yard outside I should say the Scottish 10 yard line so it's within his range but it's going to have to be well struck. Jim Hamilton waiting. He's a scrum half. Six foot eight, 20 stone. And he'll wait till Run Nogara has Safe, had his shot at goal. Yeah. And the ball has toppled. Yeah, go on. Don't see it too many times these days. Clock's still Little ticking, player lads. holding on to the ball. Clock still ticking, says Dave Pearson, yeah, but in comes Stringer. Said it was breezy. It's hard to tell what the wind is like, but if anything, it may well be slightly against O'Gara. It's certainly not helping him. And he slid it back in beautifully, but short. And now Lawson has a little look. There's Rory Lamont with him, but he kicks. And there are plenty of Irish players back there. One of them, Gordon Darcy. He's not a man to kick to. Carried on by Simon Best. This is Neil Best, no relation. Hands out, blue, leave it, blue, you lost He does plenty of damage. At that time, he's held well. Darcy, once again, he's been at the heart of most things for Ireland, and this is Limmy, Dempsey alongside him, but no space. Leave it, blue! Up to the Scottish 22. Hickey. And Ireland are beginning to perhaps move into that third gear and a little bit of heat going. This is O'Driscoll just wandering round and then he sees the space and then comes the pace and the strength and the pass is there. And still Ireland come, it's Darcy looking to close out this game. Three and a half minutes, O'Driscoll down, Best spills it and Scotland survive, and they will try and attack now. There is space for Lamont, but he takes the ball high above his head. At a standstill, nobody with him. And kicks and keeps that ball alive, and Stringer's there, and Lamont upon him. And he will try and secure that ball for Scotland. Irish players back, Scotland have the scrum. Well, it looks like Peter Stringer might have knocked that ball. As Gordon Darcy still down, prostate in the Scottish 22. He looks in some pain, and it looks like a shoulder. Unlikely he's going to finish this game by the look of him. For a moment, the Scottish fans thought that it was a, a penalty coming. But this is a Driscoll's injury. Yeah, this is the break. No, I, it's, it's happened after the tackle. He's, he's prone there on the ground, arms outstretched after giving out that pass to, to Leamy. And I just hope he hasn't dislocated that shoulder again. You can see his arms. Oh. That doesn't look good. He's not going to finish this game as Ireland cling on to this one point lead. It was a sad, sad sight for any rugby fan. His cousin Gary Driscoll on there. Assisting. Scott Murray is coming off for Scotland. And Jim Hamilton is on. Scott, Ham uh, Scott Murray's record breaking 83rd cap ends. 
Three minutes to go. Driscoll is back on his feet. And it's not dislocated. Yeah, he may just have overextended that. And if that's all it is, well, then he could be OK. He does seem in a lot of pain, though. And his concern is there's not much power in that shoulder. Oh. Well, it's his head being slapped back and stretched as much as anything. But he's a, a tough old nut. Time on you, knock on, scrum. Three minutes to go, one point the difference. Scratch. Frank Haddon watches on. Touch. Balls. Engage. Murrayfield watches on. Half Scotland's got the nose to steal this match and deny Ireland a triple crown. Lamont carries it forward again. Scotland will try and creep ever closer. It may well be a penalty, a drop goal game. But Scotland have to keep the ball and Ireland will be desperate in defence. And Ireland have the scrum and that may well be a crucial moment, a match-winning moment. Time out. That's the second row here, lads. We pause again for a, an injury to Donko Callahan. That 77, yeah. No, I was up. No. The lead to Bowles held. Bowles held. Well, it's a great Bowles turnover by Ireland. Successfully got it out. Turnover. Donegal Callaghan not budging an inch <laughs> and just holding on. Leamy trying to rip the ball out. He's, he's on his, his his feet, so that's fine. Just, oh, that's nice. Well, that's a key moment now. But well, there's still plenty time of time on. left for both sides for Ireland to either extend their lead or for Scotland to turn it around. But it's all going to hang on territory, and you just get the impression that if Ireland can get into the Scottish half or the Scottish 22, that they should be able to close it out. Stay down back, First thing is done successfully. They have the ball, and Limi lumbers on. And keep an eye on that clock. Just over a minute and a half remaining. So they will just hold on to that ball. Leave it, Blue. Now it comes back to Ogara. And his kick into touch. So well, we'll have to be quick and we'll have to get this line out. It will, he's found a touch, but it's not a great touch. He's a line. It still brings Scotland within range if they can win the ball. He's a line. Ireland going to have to be very, very disciplined and give away no penalties from here on in. Oh, on the other oh, side, not. Scotland will really look to force something from here. Shot and line out. For Scotland, Scott Murray no longer on the field, and Ross Ford, the replacement hooker, taken well by Hines. And the long pass to Patterson, Rory Lamont is there, again alongside Sean Lamont, but he Hands out now! goes no further, and Scotland still inside their own half. Rory Lawson to Rob Dewey. And Dewey will have to try and recycle this ball, but it's spilled, and the chance is gone. O'Connell has it. And in the final minute... Right out the way. Ireland will go through the phases. Darcy takes a highish tackle. Stay, stay. Leave it, Blue, lost! Ogara comes round, sees a little bit of space. Ireland have the ball, that's all they want. And the clock goes red. And if they ask the referee, which they will shortly do, Stringer asks the question now. And he will look for that ball, and they will look for touch. Well, Scotland have a penalty, but they have no time. And they have no upset. Ireland have a triple crown. There is a man down injured. A rather serious looking injury at the last. So the celebrations are muted for now. Celebrations muted to now. There's a, a very lacklustre performance by Ireland, but my man of match, my RBS man of match is Dennis Hickey, put in a try saving tackle and turnover. Has looked dangerous any time he's had the ball. But it's kind of a reflection in the performance that Hickey has, has got that because. Difficult to pull any individual out of that. Eddie O'Sullivan will be re re relieved, but very disappointed with that, disappointed with that performance.
Yeah, muted celebrations. There is a man down injured, but...